so far for the introduction what we want to do and now we have to do some theory how it works don't worry you don't have to understand it in detail you will just need the, the um, of this equation the result and then we can just use this and do the calculation you don't have to understand every step in detail but if you want further information you can find it on wikipedia and yeah, there you find a lot of about the heat equation in general. And here I wrote it down for you. It looks like this. There you have the temperature over time and also the, the values of the material. So Cp is the heat capacity and Rho is the specific density. And here you have the thermal conductivity in there and you have temperature gradients um, in the directions. So here we have in general, normally we, we assume three dimensions um, and we have, if we have some additional heat coming somewhere, then we can also add this heat here. Now we want to do some changes to this. Um, we want to assume that the heat source term is not legible and we have isotropic temperature dependent material constants. And then it changes to this uh, equation here. And if we assume that there is no heat exchange with the front edges, we say it's only a two dimensional problem only. So that means if we have a look at the, here at the picture, we want to say the heat only dissolves here over the surfaces around our material and not in this direction or in this direction. So we have a three dimensional problem and now we want to assume it's only two dimensional so that's easier to calculate and i think it's quite good and true because here you also have a lot of material and it's uh, and here the here it's more common that the heat dissolves here okay now we want to implement this formula and do the heat simulation yeah, we have a differential equation now to calculate the heat and now I will show you how we can do this or implement this yeah, in Python. We will start with defining all the parameters. Then we will create an array and apply, apply all the values. Then we will use this equation or formula and we will implement it. And we will do this with a for loop. And yeah, you will see that this then we can calculate these values here with finite difference method. I will show you how this works. And therefore we will start with defining our parameters now. And here I did this already for you. I just want to tell you how it works, what we did here. And yeah, we start at uh, minimum values of zero and it has, um, it is uh, 120 millimeters tall. We only use SI uh, numbers here. And yeah, let's have a look at our picture again. So we have 120 millimeters and 100, meter, 100 millimeters tall is our cell. And then, um, yeah, we will need to implement this to Python. And we do this like this. We define our parameters here. The height of 100 millimeters, it's 0.1 meters and I would really suggest you using SE numbers it makes it much easier with, with when you're calculating uh, this stuff then we do the same with our material parameters we uh, use it for graphite it's 1.92 2.3 grams per centimeters um, cubic centimeters then we wrote, write it down here as well in SAI numbers. So we only use graphite because one of the electrodes is mainly graphite. You also have a lot of other materials, but here I want to show you it in an easy example how it works. Normally you need uh, some changes here in the material constants to make it m even more um, accurate here. But for us, this should be work. So now we come to the next chapter, how, how to calculate 
our formula or our equation now numerically. So with Python we do it numerically. And yeah, here I summarized it for you how it works. If we have a look at our equation again, this is what we need to solve. Yeah, it's a differential equation that we need to solve. We have a differential equation. We have the temperature, which is um, um, yeah, which is by the time, which is varied by the time, and also to the uh, dimensions. So our two dimension, which is x our x direction and our y direction, which is the height actually. So how can we write this in a numerical way? Um, if you need more help, you can also check on the internet what is the finite difference method. And that's what we're using here. So and then we can write the, the left part of the equation like this. So it's a forward uh, differential, so we solve it in a forward differential way. And for the second derivative, so it's the right side of the equation, so it's basically this side here, those two parts, we will write those like this. So. And then we have our whole equation written like this. So this is the first part, which is this part. And then we have the other parts, which are here. Those are our second derivatives. So it's basically this put in our, our equation. And then we need, we have all the uh, material constants and we put it together, which makes it a bit easier. They are constant anyways. We assume they are constant. In reality, they are not. And then we write them as an A to make it even more easy. And then we do the following. We change the whole equation, which is actually an explicit form. There are also implicit ways to solve this, but here we want to use this easy way. And then you have your next uh, time step. So n is actually the time steps. You can also see this here. We have the variance to the time. So we have our other time steps here. And then we have our i and y. Those are the cells in the dimensions y and x. So and then we can calculate the next time step if we change this equation. So we put this delta t to the other side and a to the other side. And then we add this plus tn. And then we get this equation here. And this is what we have to solve now in Python. Further information. It is not that necessary that you understand it in detail. But here, if you need further information, you will find, it, for example, on Wikipedia or on other books for for calculating heat and so on now but now we want to focus on the implementation in python this is what we really want to do here and we will go over the steps now in detail what do you have to do first you have your we need an array so we will do a numpy array here and it will look like this so we have a lot of cells here and then we have at the outside temperature it's 20 degrees and then we have our blue um, blue cell here which is shown in blue and there we start after charging we have 60 degrees everywhere and we also assume here that's our floor it also has 60 degrees so what is our derivative of x so what is one step but if we look at the location, so it's from one cell to the other cell. So now we have our y, which is our direction of x. And then if we go one cell further, it's y plus one, or y is two, and then it's three. So if we have a look at our formula, there we have 
our derivative to y and there you see it changes i and y so always to the next values okay and then we need to create an array now uh, with the correct size so here we can um, assume yeah how many cell values we want to calculate and therefore we will create an, a numpy array doing this so we have to import again numpy s and p and then create our arrays so num x and let's say we want to say our um, array has now 51 cells and we do the same in the y direction we say it's 51 cells and then we create our starting array with the correct size so therefore we use t0 and we say it's np.once so and then we create an array with the size of our two values so now we have 51 values in this direction and 51 values in this direction and then we have an empty array created and we want to see if it's correct and then we will print it so let's see and there i tipped something incorrectly and then it should look like this and now we have to do some changes with the arrays and therefore we will do a small digression and we will talk a bit about how to manipulate arrays again and dive a bit further into NumPy.